This is a short instructional video on ear tube placement on the awake patient. Most commonly, this might be done on, in the inpatient setting for a patient that requires hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or less commonly, a patient presenting to the hospital or while an inpatient with acute otitis media with associated complications such as meningitis, lateral sinus thrombosis, severe mastoiditis, acute otitis media with facial nerve, paresis, and so on. In the outpatient setting in clinic, this may be uh, most commonly placed in an adult for a chronic effusion with associated conductive hearing loss, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or less commonly in some practices, a tube will be placed so that the patient can self-instill steroid drops for sudden sensory neural hearing loss, and also less commonly, the tube can be placed for uh, addressing tympanic membrane retraction. In order to set yourself up for success, you'll want to bring the right tools to the patient's bedside or wherever you're performing the procedure. Ideally, you'll perform this under an operating microscope, either one that's portable that can be transported to the patient or more commonly having the patient transported to a microscope room in the hospital or in clinic. Less commonly, in special situations, you may consider doing this with loops, although less ideal, or even an in endoscope in some situations. Other important tools to bring with you are suctions and with an assortment of three, five, and seven barren suctions, an assortment of speculums, a myringotomy blade, cups and alligator forceps, the PE tube of your choice, phenol applicator with phenol, a pusher or right angle instrument to uh, maneuver the tube into position, and typically topical drops and a cotton ball. When you're approaching the patient, you want to obtain informed consent. The main risks associated with PE tube placement are a persistent tympanic membrane perforation, and there's about a 5% risk of that, and also post-tube otorrhea. Other complications are very uncommon. You'll want to talk the patient through the procedure, which may alleviate some level of anxiety. Most adult patients don't have much difficulty with placement, but you will find there are some patients that are particularly anxious about having a tube placed. To improve your odds of success, you want to optimally position the patient, typically with the patient supine with their head turned or even in a slight beach chair position with their um, back up slightly. You will want to give them a pillow or something else so that they can also be comfortable. In general, if you can have an assistant with you, that's optimal because you'll be looking at the ear canal and managing things and it's helpful to have somebody handing you suctions and getting um, equipment ready for you. You'll want to insert in, in speculum, the largest size that's comfortable for the patient. You'll then use a curette, typically to remove any wax around the meatus. After you've removed enough wax and you can visualize the tympanic membrane well, you'll then want to apply a small application of phenol. It's really critical that you don't pour any phenol down the ear canal um, by itself, and also you should be very precise with your phenol placement. There's many different types of applicators, including sponge applicators, I prefer a small, what almost looks like a small right angle applicator so you can, you can place the phenol exactly. When you're maneuvering your instruments in and out of the ear canal, you want to avoid bumping parts of the ear canal because it can be very uncomfortable to the patient, particularly along the anterior ear canal medially. This also can raise small blood blisters or blebs which make it more challenging for you uh, subsequently when you want to place the tube. After you applied an area of anest topical anesthetic with phenol, you'll then use your myringotomy blade. There's an assortment of myringotomy blades that you can use, ones that have um, bi-directional blade or double edge or single edge. I prefer the single edge. I think it's a little bit more exact, but either are reasonable. You'll want to examine the ear and the ear canal and the eardrum in the middle of your space if possible. It's pretty uncommon, but it can be um, quite alarming to encounter a high riding jugular bulb. So if you see a blue hue, particularly along, along the posterior inferior tympanic membrane, middle ear space, you'll want to avoid that. And then m much less commonly is an aberrant dehiscent internal carotid artery, which would typically be located in an inferior uh, and anterior position. When you make your myringotomy, you'll want to make sure that you don't bury your blade too deep or you'll cut across the promontory, which can be very painful to the patient. You want to just put your blade through the tympanic membrane and make your cut. You also want to make sure that your myringotomy incision is large enough. One common pitfall is to make a very small myringotomy and try to advance a tube through it. And particularly if it's a flexible tube, it'll often spring and um, you'll dunk your tube where the tube falls into the middle of ear space and is difficult to retrieve.
After you've made your adequate myringotomy, you'll then suction the middle ear space if there is fluid. If there's not fluid, you don't necessarily have to do this step. You'll then take your PE tube. There's multiple types of ear tubes, but broadly, I think it's easiest just to classify them into what I would consider longer lasting tubes and the more conventional PE tube. The conventional PE tube typically just has a central bore with two phalanges and it's a lower profile tube. The longer lasting tubes, more, most generically called T-tubes, typically have longer medial phalanges and the stem of the tube, or the, or the tube itself, typically is longer as well. In most situations, in the inpatient setting and the outpatient setting, uh, we'll be placing the more conventional type of PE tube. The placement of, of the myringotomy is often debated. In general, I like to place the myringotomy incision, posterior and inferior, simply because at least from my perspective, there's no advantage to placing it elsewhere. And if there is a pit persistent perforation, it's quite easy to repair transcanal with a tympanoplasty. Once you have your PE tube, you'll typically grasp one of the phalanges with your small cups or alligator. I prefer a cups because it's more precise than a larger alligator. You'll advance it where one flange enters the myringotomy. At that point, I'll typically switch to a small right angle, like a 0.3 millimeter hook or a, what we call a pusher, which is a blunt-tipped um, straight pick. If it's a sharp-tipped object, sometimes you'll try to advance the PE tube and, and you'll accidentally stab the tube and it's difficult to deploy it into the middle ear space. You'll want to apply gentle medial pressure until the second flange advances into the middle ear space. Ideally, you'll tip the tube just a little bit so you can see down the bore. After that, if there's any blood or any more effusion, you can suction that. And depending on the scenario, you, you might want to install topical drops if there's an associated infection. Following tube placement, it's, re, it's typically advised to observe water precautions just for a couple days. And now we'll move on to key points. Ideally, this will be a PE tube placement will be performed using a otologic microscope. As a compromise, depending on the context, you could consider using loops or an endoscope as well. It's ideal to have an assistant with you because you'll be looking under the microscope and it's helpful to have somebody handing you different instrumentation including suctions. You'll want to bring all the relevant equipment with you and have it at bedside as previously described in this episode. You'll want to avoid bumping or traumatizing any portion of the ear canal while moving in and out and you want to have very precise placement of your phenol and your myringotomy incision to avoid trauma uh, and pain for the patient. In general, you want to make a reasonably generous myringotomy or not be too constrained so that when placing the tube, um, it can spring medially into the middle ear. This concludes our short instructional video on PE2 placement in the awake adult.